Hello and welcome everyone to the Robert J. Miller Gymnasium in Ottawa. It's time for a non-conference clash, one of the better matchups you'll see. The Fort Loramie Redskins, 9-1 on the season, taking on the 10-0 Ottawa Glandorf Lady Titans. Kevin Peel, Jerry Snodgrass with you in the booth and our entire fantastic WOSN crew. Thanks for joining us today. And Jerry, been looking forward to this matchup for quite some time. Of course, you just saw a high energy OG game, a win at Crestview on Thursday in particular, but now OG has to reload quickly and face another solid opponent. You know, and I thought that at the end of the Crestview game that OG had the other night, you know, that, hey, there's no rest. You know, you're coming right back and playing a storied program. And that's one of the great things about this on a Saturday afternoon. Two very great programs, great coaches. And Ottawa Glandorf has won the toss and tap. They'll move as you watch it in white here today. And Fort Loramie is in red here for this matchup. You know, I, I, when I talk about Fort Loramie, I just, what a fundamental, they both are, but they're so fundamental defensively. I, I, when I was watching film on them, I think they do weightlifting techniques to keep their arms in the passing lane. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never seen a team, you know, you talk about defending with your arms out, hand in the passing lane, they never let them down. No. I mean, that, that's, they're just so fundamental. Well, Katie Kaufman, one of the five starters, she is at the free throw line here for OG to start off, and she splashes home the first free throw. Picked up her ninth double-figure effort, 11 points in the win over Crestview the other night in Convoy. And one more free throw here for Katie, and good to go. She hits both, and that opens up the scoring. The Ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. And of course, free throw sponsor day, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Trying to give off baseline there. Good give and go. And then a glasser falls through. Tough Victoria shot. Mesher gets Tough on the board. Tough shot for her, but boy, manages to connect. Yeah, Mesher gets the Redskins on the board. Her first points of this afternoon. Carson Erford, Katie Kaufman, Micah Aldrich, Caitlin Kimmett, and Carly Brinkman, the OG starters. Off the glass, no, but a putback there from Micah Aldrich, who was Johnny on the spot to put that one home. Great court sense that time. You know, that's what great rebounders do. They, they think every shot's going to be missed, so they watch that flight of the ball and know where it's coming off. And that one off target, that shot. OG now on the run the other way. And driving Kaufman, that one wouldn't go down. And it was off the rim and would not go, and that ball out of bounds. It's last touched by the Redskins. And again, Aldrich with the offensive rebound that time, and that's something the other night that they did so well is offensively rebound uh, the Titans, Lady Titans did. Victoria Mesher, Skylar Albers, Jaden Rose, Avery Brandewey, and Summer Hoyne, the starters today for Fort Loramie. Carson Erford gets her first points of the game. Carson, the sophomore guard. And elevating over the top, that shot would not go down. But kicked it out, another jumper offline, offensive rebound. Good job after the two misses, one by Albers and another by Summer Hoyne. But they've given themselves a third chance on this possession. OG off to that quick 6-2 lead. And that jumper rattled out for Victoria Mesher. Trying to save this ball inbounds near the sideline and it will stick with the Lady Titans. Titans make every effort to get the ball out, go with it, try to catch Fort Loramie in a tough situation defensively. So we were mentioning about OG coming off a big win over Crestview on Thursday. It's quite the opposite for Fort Loramie. They did win 65-43 over Versailles in their last game, but it was a a week ago today, that last matchup against Versailles, so a rested team coming off the holiday. And boy, over the holidays, Kevin, teams just want to play. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, they're home all day. You know, like, get me to the court. Let me play. That's why I've seen some teams that have a long layoff, and that's, that's just not good. But are they missing their homework is the yeah. question. <laughs> Probably not. Well, no, they just want to play basketball yeah. all day. They don't want to get to the classroom. Yeah, no. No testing, no homework. Let's skip that. 
Over two and a half minutes gone in this opening quarter. Fort Laramie scored on their first possession, but have not been able to score since. Driving, and that one off the leg of Kaufman. Bounce pass from Jaden Rose went off Kaufman's leg. Titans doing a very good job right now in their man-to-man -man defense. You know, going with cutters, cutting off cutters to the ball. Earlier, last possession or two, I thought they were in a zone, but it might have been a man where they were just switching everything. They're back in a man-to-man -man right now. Lobbed it in there to Mesher. Down low pass for Mesher. Goes up over the top. Had close defense from Aldrich, but Mesher is all four points for Fort Loramie. And that ball nearly lost in the corner by Erford. Recovers, gives it off to Aldrich. Now down low pass, slicing, tough glasser. Wouldn't quite go for Brinkman. Right idea, just missed on the connection. Now a miss down low for Mesher. They're feeding her early. Two for her first four from the field. This the is miss. A, and this is a nice battle inside between uh, those two, you know, between Mesher and uh, Katie Kaufman inside. Yeah, going to be a fun matchup to watch all game long. And the runner in the lane falls through. Carson Erford with her second basket. Ur Erford was so critical in their game the other night, hitting key free throws down the stretch. So solid player is only a sophomore guard. If I'm not mistaken, I think you mentioned she's coming off of a tough she was coming off of a tough injury in soccer in the fall. Yes, Carson Erford, her first game of action was actually against Liberty Benton, which was another hard fought win earlier this month, about two and a half weeks ago. A game in which they shut down Lauren Gherkin down the stretch. Lay up for Mesher, a great inbounds play, and Mesher has all six Redskins points. Mesher took advantage, and actually that sideline out of bounds play took advantage of a lot of overplay, and. Backside was cleared out. She went back door and got the easy layup. And nearly lost the ball, tried to recover, forced it out top to Grothaus. Olivia Grothaus in the game. Little contact, a basket and a foul as they found Katie Kaufman down low. And she'll have one more at the free throw line. Something OG, and I, I wondered how they would take advantage of this. Fort Loramie does such a great job of denying passes going back and letting, not letting teams reverse the ball. So many offenses are geared around ball movement. Uh, Fort Warmy takes that away. And right now, the Titan, Lady Titans are doing a very good job of finding that, you know, so they don't have to reverse the ball and what's open on the backside underneath almost back door every time. A free throw make from the free throw sponsor tonight. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Three for three from the line for Kaufman. She has five points, averages nearly 12 a game, and off to a strong start in this opening quarter. OG up five, tipped away, ball recovered. Nicely there by Albers. She has the basketball back on the right wing. Forced one down low. Was able to find Avery Brandewee for a tough catch. Missed the shot, and Fort Loramie got it back. That's over and back, though, as that ball got away from Hoying, and she went into the backcourt to retrieve it. And it's physical inside in the key right now. You know, that offensive rebound was just taken away from Otto Glandorf. Nearly five minutes gone in this opening quarter at the Supreme Court. See, you see that, that, that reversal just being taken away. Again, Titans are able to go back door with it. And this one off for Loramie. It will stay on this end. Trying to whip a pass down low. Head coach Carla Siegel leading the way for this for Loramie Redskins program. And she has been around for seemingly ever. 1,238 games all time as a program. The Redskins, there's a layup down low for Aldrich. And we'll get a timeout coming up here. But Carla has been a part of 861 of those games. But OG is up 13 to six here. As we continue play in this first quarter, we will come right back on WLSF.
Well, the Titans off to a fine start here at home, 13-6, leading the Redskins with 2.45 to go in this opening quarter. Jerry, right now the Titans having their way on the offensive end. And, you know, of course we know this. Both coaches are great coaches, but you can really tell, and not that I would expect anything any different, but Coach Nant has done his homework on this one because, again, I mentioned when I was watching film of Fort Laramie, how much they take away that reverse pass. And Ottawa Glendorf knows it. They're taking so, so much advantage of it going back door and getting easy shots inside. I don't know if they've taken a jump shot yet from the perimeter, maybe one. A lot of interior play working out as Hoyne drills the free throw. Another Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw goes down in Lima, Wapak, Dolphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken home style happens here. Well, only one of two on the trip there for Hoyne. Nice slide there by Erford to keep possession. Now trying to go down low and hoping to split a double team as Carly Brinkman lost the ball. Now a foul in the backcourt. And that will be on Micah Aldrich. That's her first. And team two. One thing I just love about watching games like this, especially these two teams, they're so fundamental. You know, you don't see a lot of turnovers from, you know, bad passes, things like that. You just, players catch the ball when it's a tough one. Mesher coming back in. Took, took a, a bit of a break, you're yep, right. Well deserved and, and good timing for that break. Mesher with a little bit of space to roam on that three point line and she threw that one out of bounds. Her and Avery Brandoe not quite on the same page. Yeah, I just jinxed her with that one. You know, I said <laughs> they don't turn the ball over, no bad passes. And she kind of caught in an awkward spot, I thought, on that. Aldrich kicks it here to the corner, and that's a jumper for Erford on the baseline. No, battle for the rebound, and Mesher wins it away from Kaufman. A tough rebound with Kaufman right there. Mesher swings it around for Lormy looking to drive the basketball. Threw that one up at the rim and offline from Brandewe. Defensive pressure is so great by Ottawa Glandorf in the quarter court. Nothing easy for Fort Lauren. Now Kimmett missed the layup. She was open, cutting left to right. And near the right block, maybe rushed that shot just a bit. And they were able to squeeze that pass into Miley's shadow, but it was a risky one. Now to the top, there's a three ball, and it's off the rim. Knocked out of bounds. That will stay with the Redskins after the miss from Albers. Both teams really doing a good job of subbing early on getting players in the game, getting them the feel of the game, giving players rest. And of course, after such a big win, OG wasn't sure what their energy level would be after a big time win. Summer Hoyne with the field goal, her first points. But the same can be said for the Redskins coming off that long break. You're right. Didn't know where they would maybe be. This is off the top of the backboard, a miss three from Megan Horstman. And for Loramie, we'll get the basketball back. Horseman logging her first minutes of this game. You know, both teams are, are pressing, pressing tight teams in the full court. Many times you'll see Fort Loramie even press off of a miss. Mesher brings it into the front court. Redskins trying to roll someone to the basket. Ariel Heitkamp has it out top. Mesher with some perimeter touches on this possession. Off the screen, open three. And spun out and back in. Nearly fell out for Jaden Rose. First field goal, first points of the game. And here come the Redskins faithful to their feet as it is now just a one point game. Drive inside, kick out, Horseman extra pass. Three for Kimmett, no. And the rebound pulled down by Albers. Albers has a couple seconds to work with, heaves it up the court, a pass that's behind Summer Hoying. And OG will get it with four tenths. Jaden Rose hitting that three. Fort Lormy is not a, not a lot of threes on the year. There are only eight attempts per game. And Jaden Rose is their leading three-point shooter. She's nine of 24 on the year. 
Well, just for good measure, trying to toss that one in. It's offline, and that ends the opening quarter. 13-12 the score as we head to a break. Second quarter next on WSA. We are back for the second quarter of play here in Ottawa. The OG Titans leading the Fort Laramie Redskins by a score of 13 to 12. Kevin Peel, Jerry Snodgrass with you in the booth. Thanks for joining us. At 2.47 left in that opening quarter, Jerry, it was a 13-6 lead for the Titans, but Fort Laramie has the ball to start the second quarter and on a 6-0 run. Playing much better offense in the process. There's a three, and it banked in. Tough angle bank shot for Skylar Albers. Well, they're proving me wrong when I said they don't take many threes during the game. <laughs> you know, but, you know, like I said, average only eight or nine a game, but they've connected well from there so far. And that shot blocked as Kimmett cut inside. And G faithful hoping for a foul. They didn't get it. That three short. Battle for the rebound. Tip to Mesher. Mesher underneath with a tough reversal, no. And a putback, yes, for Summer Hoyne as they are on a roll right now. All from offensive rebounding. This is a 10-0 run now. Make it 11-0 run for Fort Loramie. And a battle for the loose ball. A tie-up will keep it with OG. You know, I like that. They let him play it out. Yes, it was rough. Yes, it was on the floor. But they didn't give somebody a timeout. You know, you see that too often when nobody really has the possession anyhow. Call tied up. Still remains out of a Glendorf ball. And the Titans were able to lean on Katie Kaufman. Five key points in that opening quarter. But it's been tough sledding for the Titans these last several possessions on the offensive end. Down low for Kaufman, they find her there, can't glass it in. And they battle for the rebound, Brandui pulled it down. And her pass a little too tall for Jaden Rose, that's a turnover right back to the Titans. That's their fifth turnover of the game, that's something again, both teams are very good at protecting the ball. You don't see a lot of turnovers. So 6.30 to go in the second quarter. The Titans have it right back. Brinkman had it stripped away, recovers. Look at the double team there, making things difficult. Erford had her shot blocked by Avery Brandoy as Erford was driving along the baseline. You know, these are these are tough games when you're coaching, you know, because you've got offensive sets that you want to use, but they overplay you so much that you you can't really use your sets. You just have to make offensive plays. And, you know, hopefully you've got players that understand that. Ottawa Glandorf does. And they take advantage of the situation given to them. And a blocking foul called. Jaden Rose is trying to give up the body there. And that was a good example of that. You know, they, instead of getting into an offensive set, uh, K, K, uh, Carson Erford, excuse me, Carson, you know, saw she was being overplayed. I got to take the girl to the hole. And she did. Erford and able to knock down the jumper from the baseline. Carson Erford with six points, and that stops a long stretch without points for OG. And now taken away, Brinkman up the floor for Aldrich, who stops and lays it in. Micah Aldrich, key layup in transition, four straight for the Titans. And she has six points on the evening or the afternoon. Now yeah, Aldrich having herself a game so far. And that's a baseline jumper in the short corner. Summer Hoyne drills another. She's hit three field goals in a row. Big answer for them there. OG had come back and tied it up, and that was a big answer. Now we'll see if we settle into more of a back and forth game after a couple key runs. Kick to the corner, Brinkman all day. And that one would not go down. Left alone. Ah, good. She ball wanted movement. it, she yeah. wanted it, she was looking. Great ball movement there for the Titans, just no basket. Rose fires it up off the rim. Battle for the loose ball on the deck. 
And a tie-up will keep it with for Lorme. That was a good job by Jaden Rose. She didn't hit the shot, but that was a great job of her, you know, driving, you know, beating the offensive player, but holding up, and getting her feet collected underneath her and taking the good shot. And the, the offensive rebound as a result of it. The ultimate outdoor scoreboard reading 1917 Fort Lormie. Bring your resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. You know, Kevin, I mentioned the offensive rebound in that last time by uh, Fort Lormie, and that happens so much. You know, a lot of times people don't realize you beat a player, somebody is forced to pick you up, and it puts everybody out of rebounding position, really opens the door for an offensive rebound. Mesher dribbling out top, gave it off to Hike Camp. Hike Camp in some trouble. Mesher the drive and has the height advantage. Glasser wouldn't go. Mesher recovered, but then had to really jump over Brickman yeah. to try and lay it back in and missed the rebound and put back chance. That's tough, trying to jump over somebody while at the same time trying to get a shot off. And what looked like an easy shot became extremely difficult. And for Lormy has Jaden Rose returning. Replacing Miley Chateau. So the pace slows for just a minute, both these teams Take a breath. Erford, the drive, Erford, off the glass, offline. For Lormy trying to push the pace here a bit, forced it down low, found Mesher though, couldn't get the layup. Mesher, wow. the rebound and the putback. Wow. She had missed four, her last four shots, but made that one, and it's a four point lead again. Only a junior averaging 12 and a half a game. She is tough on the inside. Second four-point lead of this half for for Lormy. And that one not true from Michael Aldrich. That's a tough thing for Ottawa Glandorf right now that every time, every time they beat someone on the perimeter and get close for a jump shot, there's somebody in their face every time. Two fouls on Michael Aldrich now. It's a bit problematic for her. I like how both teams, but Coach Ant right now, really like how they use their bench. Maddie Liebrick along with Megan Horstman returning here for the Titans. Good ball pressure. Wow. Rose forced side to side by Horstman with nowhere to give the basketball. Tough shot in the lane, and it's altered and blocked by Kimmett. Brandoe was trying to put that one up. Now Kaufman inside will draw the foul. And Katie Kaufman heads back to the free throw line. How about that? Does a good job handling the ball from the top of the key where she got it, driving to the lane. She's good both right and left handed. Two fouls now on Mesher as well. Kaufman to the line, looking for her first points of the second quarter, and she does. Now four for four from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's called Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. One more for Kaufman to cut into that lead, and she obliges. Nice soft touch from the free throw line. Five for five. And up to seven points is Kaufman in this opening half. That ball was a risky pass and taken away by Grothaus. Great help that time on the backside. Down low for Erford. Kick out. Open three. Kimmett. No, that rattled out. Kimmett has had a couple open looks that couldn't splash the three. And that's out of bounds. That's off for Lormy. They blocked that pass. And if it's if you're Kimmett, still looking for her first points of this game, she's got to keep shooting. She certainly and get a couple of those to fall. My players always told me, hey, if you're not hitting, shoot till you are. <laughs> Find a way. Love the confidence. Kimmett looking for some positioning down low. Grothaus holds it, now Kaufman. Erford looking for a seam. 
Inside drive, tough finish off glass, would not go, and Kaufman battles away, the loose ball. A little bit of contact, no call, and play continues. Oh, that pass went right through the legs of Skylar Albers. You know, you really have to credit Lady Titans on that. You know, they, they forced them to play a little more, a little faster, Fort Army, than they really wanted to play on that break. And as a result, there really were about three errant passes on that, and the last one went through her legs. Just over two to go in the half, a two-point game. Kimmett. And had it stripped away. Quick hands leads to a steal. And Jaden Rose will be a little more deliberate. She came into the front court. With both teams just ball hawking defensively. Nowhere to go <laughs> on several instances right. with the basketball. No driving lanes, no open shots, both ends. There's a lane and a late oh. block. Kaufman oh. came over to swat it away. Albers looked like she was going to lay it in, but Grothaus is in some trouble. Kimmon has to come help her in the backcourt. That was just such great timing that time by Katie Kaufman. Absolutely perfect timing. Fans right. love to see a block, yeah. you know, a nice clean block. Swatted into the bleachers. Grothaus down low feed, and Brinkman lays it in. Harley Brinkman, nice slice to the rim. And we are tied again at 21. Brinkman's first points of the half. Redskins. Now a drive. Summer Hoyne is able to under, underarm that basketball in. Summer Hoyne now four for six from the field in the first half. She is eight. Trying to fling this one to the other side to Erford. She'll shoot a three and knock it down. Carson Erford had a little bit of space and she used it to her advantage. Will the Redskins get the last shot attempt of the half? As OG's back in front. Quick three. No, that one too strong. Erford maybe one more chance here. Up the floor, Kaufman before the horn. Lays it yes. in. Yep. Good look ahead, and Kaufman with her second field goal of the half. The Titans score the last five in the last 25 seconds of the half, and it goes from a two-point deficit to a three-point lead. 26-23, Ottawa Glandorf leads at the half on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. We'll come back with some reaction from the first half of play in just a moment on WOSN. Welcome back, everyone, to the Supreme Court, getting you set for the second half of play between the OG Lady Titans and the Fort Loramie Redskins. Kevin Peel alongside Jerry Snodgrass for all the action today. One of the exciting things that we were hearing at the half here, Micah Aldrich was named a United Soccer All-American. Yes. Of course, a senior standout, 69 goals in her soccer season. She was one of 55 seniors across the nation who was nominated uh, to that team. She will head with her parents to Anaheim, California for the ceremony on January 13th. That is some special stuff. It, it is special. You know, Ottawa Glendorf, uh, girls soccer, guys too, but their girls soccer has been so dominant the last several years. And what's so great to see also is the number of those soccer players that are also playing basketball, vice versa, of course. But, you know, to, to see that they're multi-sport athletes, they just love to compete. 69 goals for a career, 27, yeah. 23 for the season, I apologize. But excellent numbers from Michael Aldridge, one of 55 in America. That's yeah. incredible. Congrats to her. Very exciting. And a bunch of applause before the half began. This jumper from Erford to start off the half, no good, and Kaufman recovers Boy, we and left puts it back. Her. Katie Kaufman nearing her season average already. She has 11 points, and now OG has a five-point lead. This is the largest lead they've had since the first quarter. Tough look underneath, 
And a layup for Skylar Albers, who was underneath the basket. She has five points. Three in that opening half. Drive, Erford will slice to the rim. Erford missed her first field goal of the half, but didn't miss that one. And then OG forces a turnover. Erford can't put it back, but wins the ball back. And Kaufman, wow. after, the, after the turnover, puts it in. Kaufman with 13. And now, OG, quite a surge here for them. Again, they trail by two points late in the half. Uh, that one finished. And Victoria Mesher with the basket gets her into double figures with 10. And that's heading to OG. Of course, as you watch it, the Titans and the home whites today at the Supreme Court moving left to right for Lormie and Red. Nine and one are the, are the Redskins on the season. 10 and 0 are the Titans. You know, both times now OG has come out in a press and both times they've given up uh, points on that, so they may go away Ooh, from that. Tough break for Erford. She was all alone for three. Wouldn't go down. And now this pressure picking up and for Lormie in yeah. big time trouble, a timeout taken. 6.28 to go in this third quarter. We'll come right back here on WSM. Today's scoreboard brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Great resort time living in your backyard every day. The luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Want to pergolas retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. And that scoreboard has changed quite a bit. Of course, Fort Loramie, 23-21, they led with 25 seconds left in the half. OG scored the last five points of the half, and now they're off to a strong start here in the third. You know, OG comes back out to press again, and you know, they've really turned up the heat here in the second half. Sometimes you wonder, you know, is a timeout worth a possession? But I think in this case, it definitely was. Open jumper, and it rattled home. An important basket. Skylar Albers with four quick points in this half. Ooh, Erfer nearly went over and back there, but then threw it away anyway into the OG bench. Yeah, the Titans were hoping that ball was tipped heading into the bench, but they do not agree, the officials. Great officiating crew today. It sure is. Of course, Scott Miller, Reyes Ramirez, and Gary Brubaker. Oh, dangerous pass. It ends up being tipped to Mesher. Mesher to Jaden Rose. Had just three points in that opening half. Rose in trouble. Forced one. Aldrich nearly took it away. There's just constant pressure here. And big time trouble is Skylar Albers. Then they break it. And get a wide open Summer Hoyne going to the basket, who has 11 points. And it's now a one point game. Up the floor, out Aldrich, too high off the glass, but out of control. Both teams, but especially, I mean, look at Ottawa Glandorf pressing even on a miss. They've really turned up the heat this half. And a foul on Brinkman as Rose was coming into the front court. And you could. Really venture to say that the pace is a little out of control right, right now for both these teams. But OG came out of the half certainly wanting to speed things up and make things hectic for the Redskins, and it's worked in and that the, regard. Yeah, and at the same time, though, you know, they've broken it a couple times and gotten a couple easy shots out of it. A couple layups in this half already for Fort Loramie. Driving kick, there's an open Hike Camp running the baseline, and Fort Loramie is back in front, 33-32. Ariel Hike Camp, the junior, with her first points. This one lobbed too tall for Kaufman, and there was help defense coming over near the right block. Boy, that last offensive possession by the Redskins, boy, was that a tremendous, you know, taking advantage of all that pressure out on the perimeter. They just spread it out a little bit, got the ball inside, went back door, got the easy shot again. And Mesher wasn't out for long. She's back in. You see this 2-2-1 press set up by the Titans. High camp tried to force that pass yep. through Aldrich. 
He tried to save it in and did off the Redskins. And that's exactly what a 2-2-1 press does. You really, you, you almost let the other team make the mistake. You're not trapping up front. You're, you know, passes that look open, but people have a good run, be able to get a hand on it. And that's exactly what happened there. I've always loved a 2-2-1 press and the back people, that back person in a 2-2-1 ends up with a lot of steals, a lot of deflections. Jerry was mentioning a lot of subs going on in that opening half, particularly with the fast pace of the second half. We're seeing subs more and more. Brinkman missed the jumper, batted outside. Aldrich recovers it. And along the baseline, this one lost out of bounds by the Titans and a turnover. You know, the pressure, I keep talking about it, but the, the pressure has turned up on both sides, of the, both ends of the court right now. And See, that's what that I'm pass. talking about yep, right Kaufman there. With the steal and tons of speed up the floor. Kaufman wow. and glassed it too strong. Just fell off the front of the rim. Kaufman was barreling downhill into the lane. Right idea. Good job by the Redskins to avoid a foul there potentially. And then Kaufman couldn't quite convert the layup. Rose stops, gives it off. Mesher on that right wing. And now the Redskins can try and dissect the defense. Past the halfway point of the third, risky pass stolen by Brinkman. Up the floor she goes, and that one won't go down. Aldrich the rebound, no. And finally comes off to Coffin, kicks it out. Erford all alone. Hits How about the three. that? How about that? Third Co time's the charm. Took her time, collected her feet under her. Took a good three-point shot. The answer, yes. <laughs> the answer for Skylar Albers, who's on fire in this half. Seven of her 10 points in the half. And it's back to a Redskin lead. Okay, they did change it to a two. But she's made her first three shots. And that one goes through as well. Carson Erford, another basket. And Erford really started to take off in this half. Already three field goals and up to 16 points. Battle for it and a timeout. Coach Siegel gets the timeout. 2.50 to go in the third quarter. We'll come back for more third quarter action on WOSN. The WOSN Scores app is new and improved. Download the brand new app from your app store. So you don't miss any of your favorite team scores. The new WOSN app replaces the old app, so make sure you download it today and stay up to date on all the scores. The ultimate outdoor scoreboard reads Titans 37, Redskins 35. Coach Siegel able to get a timeout there to hold the possession for Fort Loramie. And every possession so critical now in this back and forth game. Well, the Titans have really sped up the Redskins at times in this quarter. Kick it over to Rose. And that one off to the right. That's Miley Chateau, actually, the missed jumper. And it will stay here for the rebound. Yep, yep, stays right here. Great offensive rebound. Summer Hoyne coming back in, replacing Mesher. I suspect she won't be out for long. Lobbed it to the free throw wow. line, wow. and Hoyne comes right <laughs> back in and makes an impact. 13 points for Summer Hoyne. Well, what a nice looking shot. She knew that all the way, and again, just coming right off the bench, I love the confidence in a player like that. 37 all, great double team. Kaufman spins away, wow. inside, bucket and one for Katie Kaufman, who looked to be in trouble, then moved to her right and finished through the contact. But you know, the, the, the great thing about that is just, she was under control. She was double teamed on the inside, took her time, didn't force something up, collected the ball, collected her feet underneath her, and gets to the free throw line also. 15 points now for Katie Kaufman. 
And hits the free throw, making it 16. Another free throw from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. She's earned every one of them, too. And really no doubt on all six makes. Flung to the corner. Now quick bounce pass down low. For Lorman cycling the basketball quickly. A little room wow. in the lane. And Brandewe knocks it down. Avery Brandewe, first points of the game. I'm so impressed with the fundamental aspects of all these players on the court. So well coached. Open three. Erford can't leave her open. Missed the three. Brinkman, the offensive rebound, powered, powered up and wouldn't finish. Now up ahead. Over that right wing. Driving as Albers. Backs it out. Ford Loramie wants to run some time down one. And Carly Brinkman went for the steal. Now Erford gets the steal. Erford, layup. Carson Erford taking over in the second half. Up the floor, though, an open layup for Fort Loramie on the other side. And that's Miley Chateau with her first points. 42-41. Two key points coming right back to the Redskins after the steal and lay-in for Erford. You know, this has been a good quarter so far for both teams, but boy, Carla Siegel has to be happy that, you know, with all this going on, they've actually closed the gap a little bit. And that foul called there on the Redskins. Skylar Albers with her first foul, team second. The possession arrow does favor Fort Loramie late in quarter number three. Megan Horseman comes back in for the Lady Titans. And Aldrich. Brinkman lets it go into the backboard smartly before retrieving. Cleared out on the right side now. And dangerous pass. Aldrich has it. Horseman down low for Kaufman, forced it in. It was tipped and stolen away. And now that's last touch by the Redskins out of bounds. After the steal was converted by Rose, she lost the ball. That was really good defense on the inside, denying that pass by Summer Hoying into the post. Into the tight lineup, number 32, Caitlin Kimmett. Caitlin Kimmett back into the game. As the Titans look to extend this lead, Erford gives up her dribble, had it stripped. Oh, tie up. And that's going to the Redskins. Yep. An excellent defense from Albers reaching in at the right time to force the jump ball. And I'll say also that that was a great move that time by Carson Erford. Yeah. Looked like she had drawn yes. a foul there. Nearly used up her dribble. Mesher's got to hurry. Down to three. Mesher forced it up at the horn, and it wouldn't go through for Mesher, but actually was able to get a pretty solid look at the end of the quarter. 42-41, we have a doozy on hand. The final eight minutes coming right up on WLSA. Today's scoreboard is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. OG, a 42-41 lead over Fort Loramie as we head to this fourth quarter. Kevin and Jerry with you in the booth, and Jerry, very excited to see how this one plays out. Of course, it was a very exciting third quarter of action. Katie Kaufman, Carson Erford really carried the play for Ottawa Glandorf, but Fort Loramie, to their credit, amongst all that pressure, got a ton of layups yes. in that quarter. So scrappy on the defensive end. Boy, just able to take advantage of it. They're very strong with the basketball, value every possession, and just like we expected, we've got a one-point game going into the final stanza. The Titans will have it first. Erford lost her dribble for a moment there. Under a lot of pressure here from Mesher. For Lormy says, yeah, we can bring yep. the pressure defense too. 
Almost had a, f a five second count on that. A lot of scoring in that quarter. 18-16 for Loramie won the quarter. And stepped on the baseline, and the Fort Loramie faithful wanted a foul there. Instead, will be a turnover back to the Titans as Jaden Rose was trying to just get by a defender down the baseline. I know Carla Siegel pleading her case on that too, that she was forced out of bounds. When every possession is so critical, yeah. you know, you really are arguing all of them. Now the other way, through contact, fouled Skylar Albers before Loramie able to get right back down the floor, and Albers with a chance at the free throw line. Carly Brinkman, her second foul. You know, I keep saying it, but boy, that denial defense, you know, that Fort Loramie plays. A hand is always in the passing lane. No pass is easy. And the free throw, too strong there for Albers. She'll still have a chance to try and tie this game up. Another Lee's Famous Recipe free throw. Lee's Famous Recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe chicken home style happens here. For Loramie now, just two for four from the line today. And it's tied at 42. They have to just throw this ball down the floor. Erford came to it. Kimmett stops, pops, left it short. Aldrich tipped the rebound to Kaufman, trying to save it in on the baseline. It's off the Redskins. You have to really credit Katie Kaufman with that to save another possession. She was inside position when that shot went up. Did a very good job of seeing where that ball was coming off. And was able to keep the ball alive and ultimately tipped out of bounds and still possession out of Glandorf. Caitlin Kimmett averages around eight per game. She's struggling today. And that one wouldn't fall either. Three from deep. Fort Loramie, another chance to take the lead. Mesher guarded closely by Brinkman, who has two fouls. Looking down low instead. Wait out top. Troy Yant, 12th year at the helm of this OG program and an amazing record here at the Supreme Court. 115 and 12. Tried to avoid a setback today. Victoria Mesher has other ideas. 44-42 for Loramie back in front. Leading score for the you know Fort Loramie Indians. Oh, stolen She's away. away Good defense that. there from Mesher. Up the floor, lay a bucket and one for Skylar Albers who's piecing together a huge second half, and she'll have a chance to add on at the free throw line. Boy, and just like that, it's a four point lead for Fort Lorimer. Skylar Albers has been huge in this half. Eight of her 11 now in the second half. And especially when chaos was ensuing early yes. in that third quarter, and. OG was really bringing the pressure. Albers was one of those that was getting to the rim and ultimately trying to settle things down for Fort Loramie. She misses the free throw, but it is a four point lead. Brinkman kick out, Kimmett open. And that one offline, but OG tried to save that rebound. They do, Erford, tough shot, it was altered. And good defense there. Trying to get Kimmett involved, this OG team, but another basket for Fort Loramie. They've opened up a six point lead. Avery Brandewi. Her four points all coming in the second half. Uses the backboard so well. And a tie up now. That will favor the Redskins. Boy, and all of that still goes from the great denial defense into the post. They play such good position. They don't front the post but they play around it with a hand in the passing lane, making it so tough to enter the pass. And then when you've got pressure on the ball as well, boy, that's tough. That's very tough. Well, this OG team has been down and out before, trailing at Liberty Benton, rallied back to win. Rallied for a huge win over Toledo Christian here at the Supreme Court as well. And a jump ball, this will head to the Titans. Carson Erford, a little slow to get up. So this is a Titans team that's not phased by trailing in games. A quick 30-second timeout taken by Troy Yan. 5.27 to go in the fourth, 48-42 for Lauren. 
Check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. Well, we hope you're staying tuned to this one because we have a very exciting game going on here for Lormy has opened up its largest advantage of the game at 48-42. But OG, just a moment ago, before that timeout taken by Coach Yant, getting a critical turnover as they try and turn the tide in this final stanza, Jerry. Yeah, and a lot of times coming out of a timeout, you'll see a different defense, but these teams don't do that. They play their solid defense and stick with it, just do it better. Get, take the breather for what it's worth. Brinkman, down low pass. Kaufman, the help defense though from Mesher, takes it away, then quickly uses up her dribble. As that pressure again helps, but up the floor, all alone, Albers layup as they broke the pressure again. And Fort Loramie now is a 50 to 42 lead. And the Titans respond, Erford inside, forced it up on the glass, no. And Jaden Rose the rebound. And it is, there are several players on the deck here underneath the basket and it will lead to a jump ball and for Loramie possession. But right now, the Titans are struggling to get good looks on the offensive end here, Jerry. And you know, too, I think something that's going to really play a role here in the last four minutes of this of this game, you, as aggressive and fast as the game has been, you're seeing a lot of players right now really, really gasping for air. So depth, conditioning, every bit of it. For Loramie has thoroughly weathered the storm of pressure put on by this OG defense. And now they'll have to execute in the half court to try and stop the Redskins. Good patience this time by Fort Loramie. Not bleeding the clock, but just... Yeah, waiting to get the best yeah. shot. Waiting out the Titans' defense, halfway point of the quarter. That tells you a lot about discipline. You know, a lot of teams will just take a bad shot. Oh, Albers did get a good look, but wasn't able to get it all the way up on the backboard. Those are ones that, as a coach, like, oh, please, I wish that would have gone in. Brinkman drive, tough finish, and rebound pulled down by Fort Loramie. Another contested attempt in the lane there, or just outside the lane from OG. I know with both, at the end of this game, both teams are gonna say this is one of the most physical, demanding games that they've played in so far this year. Kimmett picks up her second foul, and certainly, I'm sure with the, the shooting woes for Caitlin today, it's not, that's leading to her frustration. That looked to be a bit of a frustration foul from her as a timeout's taken. With 3.22 to play, Fort Loramie in front on the road, 50-42 WLSN. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WLSN streaming service for only $8 per month. You can watch WLSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wlsn.tv. Also available on Roku and Apple TV. Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard 50 to 42. Fort Loramie leading Ottawa Glandorf here as we're getting later in this fourth quarter. And the Titans on the defensive end gonna have to find a way to get stops and lead to offense. You know, we talked a lot about, you know, the the demanding schedule here that uh, Ottawa Glendorf has had over the last couple of days and over Christmas. You know, they just played two nights ago and in a very tough physical game. Mm -hmm. And coming back today, and you know, in an afternoon game, and yet you've got Fort Loramie that's pretty well rested right now. And perhaps that's worn on them a bit. Uh, you wonder. Having played such a close physical game the other night, it potentially could have. 
OG is going to expend some energy here and force a steal. Grothaus, and then it's taken right back by Albers, tied up in the backcourt, and OG will get it back. Grothaus with the steal, but then Albers, the heads up play to take it right back. What well, looked like Fort Laramie was pulling it out a little bit, you know, with, a, with four high. And, you know, when you do that, you know, they're, they're backing up a little bit. It seemed like that's, you know, the errant pass became because of that. The eight-point lead that Fort Loramie has held for about a minute worth of game time is their largest of this contest. Ball out of bounds. That's off Mesher, who's creating some problems for Erford out top. How about that for Hustle out of Mesher? Swatting the ball near the scorer's table. Erford off a of screen, Erford inside, tough finish. Wouldn't go down, rips away the basketball. And now a jump ball will head back to Fort Loramie as Erford giving her all right now, hitting the deck, trying to finish down low. But right now there is just no room to finish in the lane for OG. And, and there's another good example though, you know, uh, Erford's able to take advantage of beating her player, be, being her defensive player. but. Well, when you do that, you've, you've got help right there in front of you. And knocked out of bounds for Loramie. They have to toss it in again right in front of the OG bench. Micah Aldrich will give Carson Erford a bit of a break. She does look gassed. We're getting down to the two and a half minute mark, and I think this possession is very critical. And Grothaus trying to reach in and get the steal. Timeout, I think. Timeout or jump ball? Jump ball. I think it. Oh, an official from behind the play is saying a timeout may have been called. Okay, let's see. This is a big time conference. Scott Miller, Reyes Ramirez, and Gary Brubaker, they're going to give the timeout, it appears. Yep. Full timeout. Time with 2.42 left. 50 to 42, Fort Loramie in the lead. Our Ultimate Outdoor Scoreboard brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. And of course, this game means a lot. You know, for both of these teams going forward, every Essentially every contest for OG, just hammering on that schedule, so difficult for them at Crestview, now at home, and those big time games, they don't seem to stop, especially as you continue on with WBL play. And you know, for Fort Loramie, who's had a tough schedule of its own, but had a week off after the win over Versailles, trying to pick up a hallmark win that could really help define their season here today on the road, and they've certainly weathered the storm in this second half to take this eight-point lead. You know, that says a lot about schools, their, their coaches, and the schedules they want to play. You know, sometimes you're locked into games, obviously, because of league schedules. The WBL and, of course, the Shelby County League, both are very tough. But they also take the opportunity, non-league, to schedule good opponents. And that just makes you better. Their ultimate goal, yes, is league titles, conference titles. But at the same time, it's tournament time for them, too. Masher, dangerous ball, and it's saved in right to Kaufman. On the run, Kaufman, and had it stripped out of her hands. Ball on the deck, another tie-up. And this one to Ottawa Glandorf. And actually, before that timeout, that's what OG was hoping for yes. because the jump ball arrow was in their favor, but Coach Siegel is able to get the timeout in time. Now that arrow will help the Titans after a near turnover there for Kaufman. And as I said, you know, as we get down, we're at two minutes and 30 seconds left. Every possession right now is so critical. Lobbed in here to Kaufman. Three ball, Kimmett. Hits Whoa. it. Huge basket for Caitlin Kimmett. And a timeout with 2.24 remaining. 50 to 45, just a quick 30 second timeout taken. And the ultimate outdoor scoreboard now 50 to 45 in favor of Fort Lormy. But OG needed Caitlin Kimmett Boy, did really they desperately to get hot at the right time. She hits a huge three. Yes, that was so necessary. And just like that, we've got an eight point lead cut down to five. Fight to the finish. 
especially with this OG team. Now, again, we had mentioned the Titans had allowed some transition layups in this second half, but they also have forced a lot of turnovers. And if this defense can ball hawk a couple more possessions, force the turnovers they need, this will be down to a one possession yep. game or less. We'll see. But the pressure will be on for the final 224. The 9 and 1 Redskins, the 10 and 0 Titans paneling it out here at the Supreme Court. Titans now in full, come out in a full court man to man press. And no one guarding the inbounder. Mesher gives it off to Brandewit. Oh, they got to get out of the backcourt here. Dangerous pass, balls on the deck. And I don't know if they got it across. Maybe not. Coach Yant didn't think they had got across in time. And now knocked away by Brinkman. Nearly stolen by Grothaus. Pandemonium out there on the court right now. Lobbed out top. Remember now, the possession Titans. arrow does favor Fort Loramie. Yeah, the Titans may have to foul now. 148 remaining. They do have the double team here. Albers in trouble. Now triple team and a foul on Brinkman, which will be her third. Foul five, I believe, third. And I believe Eight that's third. their fourth foul of the quarter, so. One more they need to commit here. And vice versa on the other side, if Ford Loramie was in a position where they were trailing, they'd have to commit five fouls yes. in a hurry. We saw that actually in the OGLB game that Liberty Benton had to commit a lot of fouls and lost a lot of time doing so because they had a foul disadvantage actually right. coming down the stretch. Albers and able to lob it over. That great That's a tough keep place. away, knocked out of bounds by Kaufman. That's a scary double team to have come over your direction. Kaufman and Aldrich. Yeah, there's two places right now you don't want that ball if you're on offense, and that's in the deep corner and the half court corner. Kimmett coming back in for Aldrich. With a minute 23 to go. And for Loramie right now, not even looking at the basket. Long time to hold the ball. But they have handled it nicely to this juncture. Mesher's got to get rid of it, had it knocked away. Can she recover in the backcourt? She does. Albers. Good move that time of not forcing the pass in. And now the foul comes from Grothaus as Erford came over to help. Boy, OG had a couple chances yes. where that ball was loose, but a 50-50 ball goes to the Redskins, and now this game will be decided at the free throw line. Like a lot of games are. I think Coach Ant's really going to go back to that, you know, however this turns out, but he's going to go back to what he thought was a 10-second call. And nicely knocked through by Jaden Rose again for Lormy from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line today. Just three for six. Now four for seven. 52-45. Those are two big free throws right now. Swinging around, Brinkman. Rebounding is such a key right now. Open Kimmett, second three wow. in a row. OG has it down to four with 52 seconds. Now they get the trap and it's stolen. Carson Erford up the floor. Lays it in, it's a two point game. They trapped the Redskins, forced the turnover, and Carson Erford racing the other way for the layup. Down to two, just like that. That was the turnover you needed if you're Ottawa Glandorf. Yeah, you know, if you're Ottawa Glandorf, you know, he's telling them right now just keep playing solid defense. You don't need to foul. But they also, I, I, I'm going to back that up a little bit. You also have four fouls to give. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the problem from the Fort Lorimy side of things right now is if the lead was yeah, somehow Fort to Lorimy, flip. I should yeah. say that. Yes, yes. You might run out of time trying to foul the Titans. But if you're OG, you, you don't need to foul. Just keep up the good pressure. And that pressure led to a bounce pass that was stolen away. And taken down the floor. Both teams getting low on timeouts here. Scoreboard reading that each side has one remaining. As we're down to under a minute to play. 
And this allows OG to set up their defense coming out of this timeout and try and force another turnover. You know, 40, 43 and a half seconds left. That's a long time to hold the ball on the offensive end. So again, if you're Coach Ant, just, just keep up the pressure. Over the last two minutes and 40 seconds, an 8-2 run for Ottawa Glandorf. They were down 50 to 42 with 3.22 left. And again, taking Case and Erford off the, off the ball allows that trap right up front. Masher is able to lob it up ahead. Very tough Albers. place to stop. And she's doubled up, and she's got to get rid of it. And now she doesn't, but Coach Siegel has used yeah. her last time out with 35.6 remaining. Yeah. She's telling them, <laughs> don't pick up the ball in that spot. You have two defenders, and two lines that are keeping you trapped in that corner. And OG just nicely steering her right, right into one of the worst possible locations there. So now for Fort Loramie, no timeouts. So you don't have any more opportunities to strategize unless the Titans use their last timeout. You know, that's one of the things I heard Coach Siegel say, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> referencing where you're picking the ball up, but it's almost like, Coach, you have to understand, they're forcing me there. <laughs> You come out and do this. The Ultimate Outdoor Scoreboard brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. So what an excellent stretch here for the Titans. Looking down and out, trailing by eight, but we gave a disclaimer right around the halfway point of this quarter. Yep. And you better not count them out, because here they are in a two-point game with the crowd coming to their feet, hoping for a turnover or some missed free throws. I still think this is going to boil down to free throws at the end. Summer Hoyne will inbound the basketball. And Hoyne. You and Kaufman got her hands in there, but Jaden Rose recovered the loose ball. Now forced a bounce pass along the mid-court line and fouled there was Skylar Albers by Kimmett. And you don't realize how hard that was to get the ball in bounds with Katie Kaufman, you know, foot away from you, you know, with very, very tough pass in bounds. And a free throw goes through from Skylar Albers, who has probably been the most critical player for this for Loramie team in the second half. Albers makes both. Two possession game with 30 seconds remaining. Erford trying to speed up the floor. And lost the ball. More or less poked away from her by Mesher. And now is where you're telling your players, I mean, you can foul. Don't give them anything easy. Two possessions makes all the difference in the world. Inbound to Brinkman. Titans got to hurry. Brinkman is fouled. That's not really a bad not idea, at all. though, for Coach Albers. Siegel's applauding that. Second foul, because Brinkman had a nice lane to the basket. And again, they have a ton of fouls to give here. Three more to give, 19.6. So as nope. long as you're not sh fouling someone in the act of shooting, right. not a bad strategy. Not at all. Brinkman, Grothaus looking to drive. Grothaus off the back iron. Tried to save in that rebound. Underneath the basket, Avery Brandewey held onto it. And a foul called on Katie Kaufman. And the Redskins now in the driver's seat to try and nail down their 10th win of the season. Pretty good look for Grothaus there. Her first shot attempt of the game, but it just didn't fall through. And a good job that time by Fort Loramie of not panicking once they got that rebound, not throwing it away. Jaden Rose, oh, not there, that one too strong. She was two for two at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. And one more coming. That one's good. So now Erford up the floor, needs to shoot. She's gonna go to the basket, lost it, but it's down low to Katie Kaufman with 1.3, and that will end the game as the OG Titans 
mount an excellent comeback, but fall just short to the Fort Loramie Redskins, who win on the road 55 to 52. OG now their first loss of the season at 10 and one, and 10 and one the other way for Fort Loramie. What a gutsy win here for the Redskins today, finding a way to overcome a bit of a slow start and a strong rush at the end from the Titans. And you know what? They're going to go back and say that this is one of the toughest games pressure-wise, and I'm not talking about mental pressure, but the physical pressure, denied passes, you know, have to protect the ball. I mean, every time you've got it, nothing's safe. And, boy, they answered the call. Great game, great effort by Ottawa Glandorf as well. 32-26, Fort Loramie outscored the Ottawa Glandorf Lady Titans in the second half in 55-52. The final, Katie Kaufman finishes in the game with 19, make it 18 points, which was uh, tying a career high for her, which she had achieved uh, two other times. But a tough finish today for OG and plenty of lessons to learn if you're, if you're Coach Yant Certainly a frustrating loss here today, but a lot you can take from this, a great effort against Florida. You're right. There's a lot they can take from this. You know, that again, that goes right back to what I said earlier about playing tough competition non-league as much as in-league. You will really benefit from this game. And I know that's not, you know, you take every loss seriously and every loss hurts, but you know you grow from every one of them. And I think that's one of the things that sports offers. You know, you, you rebound and you deal with losses and how you deal with them generally separates the good teams from the not so successful teams. A win for the Fort Loramie Lady Redskins here on the road as they defeat the Ottawa Glandorf Lady Titans 55-52. Thanks for tuning in to this presentation of WOSN for our entire fantastic crew and my partner Jerry Snodgrass. I'm Kevin Hill saying good afternoon from Ottawa when the Redskins escape the Supreme Court.